Good morning, everyone. This is Dan O'Sullivan with your Bucks Island Area Fishing Report for Saturday, September the 26th. Hey, let's spend some time with Tom Ott, our buddy from up there at Gunnersville. I know, Tom, things have been uh, progressing well up there at Gunnersville with these rains and cooler weather. Finally, finally starting to see that big push <laughs> up shallow. I mean, we've been waiting on it, talking about it for several weeks. I mean, I was seeing water temps 72 to mid 70s last weekend, but that, uh, that, Squareville bite, chatterbaits, spinnerbaits. Uh, I had some great success on a spinnerbait this past weekend. So, man, I'm telling you, they're they're getting there, uh, and that push is really starting to happen. Uh, still searching for that frog bite. Not made it there yet, but uh, we are seeing some uh, some flipping bite. But the the moving baits are really picking up. So you talk about chatterbaits, square bills, those kinds of things. What color kind of colors do people want to look for when they're throwing that kind of stuff? Do they want to look for bluegill patterns or the shad starting to move? I'm using shad patterns only. Uh, you know, I, I like the I like the grays and the whites. Uh, anything that's going to look like a thread fin. Uh, again, the bull shad's coming on. I mean, and that's a bone color type bait anyway. So I'm really sticking to that. I think the bluegill. I did see some some bluegill shallow flipping a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but I just wasn't having a lot of success on anything that I could get uh, that looked bluegill-like, if you will. Uh, most everything that I'm seeing are chasing right now. So look for silvers, look for whites, look for bone colors, maybe in a swim bait, those kinds of deals. Uh, are you seeing a topwater bite up there for the bass at all? Has that started to show up yet? It really has. You know, we're seeing a, a big spook bite come on, uh, a lot of, mostly in the scattered grass. It's still We're still in that six to eight foot range, but we're starting to see a, a good good hardy bite that comes on and lasts throughout the day. I know that there's not much better than a topwater bite, especially those that are right off the edges of the grass. That's a lot of fun to look at. So oh, do they want to stay with it all day or do they want to be able to move move back and forth between different patterns? I think I, I definitely move back and forth with those patterns. I mean, you get a good high sun. I mean, it's hard to beat a spook in the middle of the day with sun. I mean, that's when you can really catch one of those monster gunners will fish. So, so I, and, you know, definitely moving in and out. Uh, and, and you got to do it. the big thing right now, put your trolling motor down, go fishing. I mean, you got to move until you find these fish. They're not going to sit there and wait on you to come get them. I know that uh, the bass bites moving on. Uh, have you heard anything about any crappie bite up there at, at Gunnersville? I haven't as of yet, but I mean, I really don't get into that generally until about the first of December, but I know it's going to be there. It's been strong the last few years and, uh, that's where you need to come up here and catch some of those big slabs with me. Uh, sounds good. I think we'll do it. Well, Tom, thanks for spending some time with us here on our Bucks Island Area Fishing Report for Gunnersville, presented by Mercury, and we'll talk to you soon. All right, guys. Y'all have a great one. You too. All right. Good morning, everyone. This is Dan O'Sullivan with your Bucks Island Area Fishing Report for Saturday, September the 26th. We caught up with Josh Heron, our buddy from Reaction Innovations and a good friend and customer. Josh, tell us what's been going on down there at Logan Martin and Lay Lake. Man, this cooler weather's really got these fish biting. Uh, spinner baits, buzz baits, spooks, all the above. It's going pretty good. Um, spotted bass are really starting to show up. Better spotted bass are starting to show up, so it's a good time to be on the Coosa River. Well, I know that we've had a couple of fronts come through. The, the overnight air temperatures have dropped down a bunch, and I know that tends to make things spiked. Is that what's done it, these back-to-back -back storms with the rain and the current that comes with it? Yeah, absolutely, man. We were in need of a change. We had a real kind of hot and relatively dry summer compared to most. But, I mean, these uh, these last two fronts that have come in have really kind of put these fish going in the right direction as far as just they're coming to life more in the day than when everything has been strictly at night. So Logan Martin is uh, typically where people have been spending a lot of time lately. So tell me what, what, what do they want to look for, what kind of areas, what kind of cover, what kind of baits? Man, uh, these fish are still kind of on their main lake deal. They really haven't turned for their fall their fall patterns. So uh, seawalls in the morning are doing great. Spinner baits, buzz baits, like I said, um, up on in the day when they turn the water on, it's really kind of got them feeding. So any of those little main lake transition areas where the fish are going to turn and head towards their fall patterns are the primary areas you need to be looking for. Uh in the afternoon, is it something that you're going to do all day long? Can you stay with that kind of stuff all day, or are you still going to have to? They're still kind of brush related in the afternoon. They kind of tail off and leave, but the more cool nights we have, the longer they're going to stay during the days. 
Okay, let's go to Lay Lake and talk about that a little bit. I know that's a kind of a different fishery. There's a lot more visible wood and those kinds of things that people can target. Is it the same kind of deal? Yeah, man. The upper end of Lay Lake's really starting to come to life, too. Um, anywhere from Hawks Creek up to Thumber, Thunder Thimble Creek all the way up to Kelly. I mean, current's really shining. Yeah, I've heard that Thunder Thimble Creek can be good. Um, so what kind of colors are you looking for? Is it going to be a shad deal there? No, I mean, right now, um, there's really not that much shad at the river. It's really more of a crawfish still, surprisingly. Uh, is it a largemouth bite at Lay more than a spot? No, it's, a, it's, it's primarily a spotted bass thing. Uh, afternoon there, do we want to turn offshore no, as well? No, it's it's strictly driven by current. So check your generation schedule. Uh, Alabama Power's got a really good app that will show you constant updates. It's called Smart Lakes, and uh, that's a really good way to find your day. Well, Josh, we appreciate it as always. Thanks for spending some time with us on our Bucks Island Area Fishing Report, presented by Mercury. Thanks, sir. Welcome, everybody, to our Bucks Island Area Fishing Report for Saturday, September the 26th, presented by Mercury. Hey, we caught up with our good friend and pro staffer, Tracy Robinson. Let's hit Neely Henry Lake real quick and kind of tell me what to expect for these guys out here right now. Well, Neely Henry right now is slowly transitioning to uh, the fall patterns, at least it was up until these current rains. I'm not sure what that's going to do to them, but um, a lot of fish moving up shallow. Um, catch them on a lot of things. I've been using the War, War Eagle spinnerbait a lot around some of the grass. Um, favorite plastics, you know, the some of the pack of crawls, three sixteenths pegs, fishing around the grass and wood. Um, Coosa River, Neely Henry especially, covered with grass and wood from one end to the other. The key right now is finding the bait and your places uh, that you're focusing on right now, you know, it's changing day to day based on where the bait is. So obviously generating current daily is moving bait around, moving water around. So your, your better places may not be the same from day to day. It's number one is find that bait. Once you find the bait, you're going to find the fish and just your traditional shallow water fishing, spinner baits, top waters, rattle traps, that kind of bait. Whatever you kind of like to catch them on, you can catch them once you find that bait. What kind of area of the lake would you suggest people start at? Do we want to look Minnesota Bend up to just above Gadsden, or is it going to be run up north or run down to the run down to the Neely Henry Dam? What do you think? Well, right now, you know, if you'd asked me a week ago, I would, you know, I would have told you different patterns on different parts of the lake. You know, there's shad and, and bait fish and feeding bass from one end to the other. Up the lake, you catch a lot of fish in the lay downs and the wood up the river from, uh, you know, from Hoax Bluff Ferry up to the dam. That mid lake's a little bit more versatile. You got some shallow and some deeper stuff. And then the lower end's mostly deep with some good dock fishing. But right now, with all the erratic uh, weather and, and, the, and the water flowing like it is, that middle portion, I would say, from City Park there in Gadsden at the bridges to the south side bridge is going to be your most stable water on, on Neely Henry right now to focus on. So hit, let's hit Weiss real quick. Catch a lot of fish shallow up there. You mentioned the bladed jig, definitely one item. Again, the spinner baits have been playing a key role. Um, almost like a shad spawn type deal. It's not a shad spawn, but there's a lot of shad on the seawalls up there. And you can get a good shallow, shallow bite early in the morning on a lot of the seawalls up there on, on your top water and spinner baits. Um, Always wood up there. Fish always relate to your brush piles, the log jams, and wood in the different flats up there. But it's definitely transitioning to fall pattern as well. Well, Tracy, we appreciate the time. Thanks for spending the day with us, and we will look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Anyway, that'll wrap up your Saturday, September the 26th, Bucks Island Area Fishing Report presented by Mercury. Don't forget, like us on Facebook, smash our subscribe button there on uh, YouTube, and uh, keep Keep up with us as we present these things to you weekly. We also caught up with our friend and pro staffer Jason Hart, crappie master over there. Jason said that Neely Henry has uh, the, the crappie bite started to pick up a little bit. It's slow, but not great, but you can still catch a few fish shooting docks on a 32nd ounce head. Uh, bright colors tend to be good right now as the water has uh, gotten a little bit dirtier with the, with the runoff. But anyway,